Uh, okay. Okay, so let's start with the with this session about the creation of uh, tracker data. Okay, yesterday we saw uh, in aggregated data we saw how to well how to create new data, how to handle data values and data set complete registration records. Today we are going to talk about uh, the tracked data. And the main thing to that is important to notice is in the, in the tracker data, uh, we have two kinds of data. Uh, we have uh, the, the data that is called identifiable. It means those elements that can be identified by a UID. And the non not identifiable objects, that is, those objects that cannot be identified by a UID. So is, this is very, very similar uh, to what we saw yesterday with data values. So now instead of data values, data value module, we will have the event module, track identity module, enrollment module on that. And within each module, we will have a repository to access the event or the track identity instances or the enrollment. So when we are, uh, I said I said that we have two main kind of uh, elements. The identifiable object are the not non identifiable object. The identifiable object are the track identity instances, the enrollment, the event, the nodes, and the file resources. I mean, these elements can be identified by the eleven. Uh, character UID that you, I think you are familiar with. Uh, and you can use that UID to do any modification or to, on those elements. And in the not identifiable objects group, we have the track entity, uh, track entity attribute values and the track entity data values. It means that these objects are not identified by a UID, but by a, com a combination of fields. For example, the track identity attribute values are identified by the combination of a track identity instance and an attribute. And the data values are identified by the combination of an event and a data element. Okay. So how to deal with the identifiable object? As I said, the identifiable objects are identified by a UID. This UID is unique. And uh, th this UID is generated by the SDK. So how, how is the, the flow here? The flow is, in first place, you have to, to create like the base object a base object with the minimum information required to create an object. Uh, this is what is called a projection in the SDK. So for example, here in this code snippet, we have the track entity instance projection that only needs two fields, the organization unit and the track entity type. So this is the minimum information required to create a track entity instance in the system. So in the in the repository we have an add method that accepts this projection and returns a UID. So once you create the, the object using this projection and you get the UID, now you can use that UID to access the track identity instance or enrollment or event or whatever, and, mo and modify and uh, change uh, a field or uh, delete it or update anything like here, for example, the object repository. In this object repository, 
you will find methods with the name uh, set. For example, in the case of tracked instances, you will have set, I don't know, uh, geometry, set, follow-up, set, whatever, and a value. Okay. Also, the delete, delete if exists. And then we have the treat method to get the, the get the object, get the element, or check if the object exists or not. Okay, and this was for identifiable objects. Okay, now for not identifiable objects, uh, to, if you remember from yesterday, uh, for the aggregated data values, we have to to specify uh, the, the data elements, the organization unit, the period, the attribute of vision combo thing. So you need to specify all that information to identify the data value. In the case of uh, tracker data, uh, we have tracked entity attribute values and tracked entity data values. Those values are can be uniquely identified by, in the case of attribute values, by the tracked entity attribute and the tracked entity instance. Because the, this combination of tracked entity instance and tracked entity attribute is unique. And in the case of tracked entity data values, uh, you can identify a data value by the event and the data element only. And in the same way that before, uh, we have some write methods, methods, methods to upload, uh, to, sorry, to update the, the data, the set to modify a new value in the database, delete on delete if exists. And also the, the same re read method than before. And yeah, uh, in the same way that uh, with all the repositories and models in the VK, we always have two ways to access the repository, the reactive method and the blocking method. This is the same thing. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Because this is about creation of tracker data. Because now I'm going to um, change the subject a little, a little. We are still in creation of data, but more focus on the data entry form. And this is about the the reserved values. Okay, um, you know that uh, in the tracked entity attribute, tracked entity attributes uh, can have some properties like the value type, for example, if it's numeric or, or a text or a text or a date or whatever. And also there's a property called unique and automatically generated. That it means that uh, it is not the user who enters the, that, the value for that attribute, but it is the system that generates the value for this. And this value is, is unique, usually. And also you can specify a pattern to, uh, to generate the value. So this value has to be unique in the whole system, but we know that uh, in the device, in the in the mobile device, you can be working offline. So the SDK and the web, web API, uh, they have have a mechanism to preserve some values. So the backend generate pre-generate some values for the device. So in this way, we guarantee that those values are going to be unique. And this is required to operate offline um, and to be sure that they are going to be unique. Uh, 
yeah the okay we have to download before we go offline we have to download these values uh, this is automatically done in the skeleton app and in the app calling this method and the important thing is that we can get a new value using the reserve value manager get value and we, we have to specify the attribute uid and the organization unit uid and so in this way you can regenerate uh, you can get a unique value and you you are sure that that value is unique uh, to yeah, to pre-generate the attribute value. Um, it's important to know that uh, the SDK pre-generate uh, downloads a certain number of attribute values, usually 100, but this is uh, this can be parameterized, and once uh, the SDK has run out of values, it automatically uh, query requests for more values to the server. This is automatic. And also the SDK uh, handles all the logic about the expiration of reserved values because they have an S pretty date. And, and also to, to be sure that we always have values in the device to use. Okay. okay. Uh, any questions so far about the creation of tracker data or the reserved values? There are no questions. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the exercise then. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is quite a, a long exercise. Um, yeah, we will have like more than half an hour for this. Uh, this exercise, okay, I'm going to show you the code and also, yeah, okay. So in this exercise, uh, I'm going to run the, the application. Okay, this exercise uh, has three parts. It has uh, three parts, the creation of the tracker identity instance, the creation of the enrollment, and the creation of the attribute values. It means all the steps involved in the creation of a new tracker entity instance with the enrollment in a, in a program. So, okay, if you go to this, to this branch, to the initial branch, the exercise eight, and then you go to programs, child program. Here you can see a, a plus button uh, that in the yeah in the use cases branch, uh, this button gives you access to the to the flow to enroll a target entity instance in a program. So here. I click the button, but it does nothing because it's not implemented. So what will you what uh, you will have to do is to implement the missing method in this flow. Okay. So in first place, you have to create a new TI, and you have to go to this class, the tracker entity instance tree. Tracked entity instance activity class. So let's go here. Okay, is yeah, is this one? 
Tracked Entity Instance Activity Class. And the first part of the exercise is that here you have to create the Tracked Entity Instance. Uh, and in the description, the tips, uh, you can see that uh, you have to set any organization you need in the capture scope. So probably the first step here is to get an organization unit using the organization unit repository, filter in by capture scope and get the first one that you want. And also we saw here that the Tracket Entity Instance uh, projection uh, requires two fields, the organization unit and the Tracket Entity type. Here we have the program. So, and the program has a tracked entity type link. So, this is the tracked entity type we have to assign. And this method returns a, a string, a single of a string. And this string is the UID of the object created. That, as we, as we know, this add method returns that string. Okay, this is the first part of the exercise. And so I'm going to explain the three parts because uh, each part uh, in, will give you access to a next step in the flow. I mean, if once you have the tracked in the instance, you can click the plus button and it will do, do something, but it will not enroll the tracked entity yet. And now it's enrollment in the enrollment form service. Okay, so let's go here. You can check the to do's here and look for the enrollment form service. Okay, so here we have the exercise 8B and it says create a new enrollment and save the enrollment UID in the variable enrollment UID. Okay, here in this class, we have this variable enrollment UID that is used by other methods within the service. So it's important to save, to fill this variable with the enrollment UID. And as we know, the add method in the enrollment service returns the enrollment UID. So you have to create the enrollment UID and then set the enrollment and date and incident date to today. And we have a helper class for that, helper method for that. Okay, this is the second part. So now once you are here, you can click this button and probably the TI is going to be enrolled. And the last part, the attribute values. Probably the TI is going to be enrolled, but with without attribute values. So we have to go to the enrollment form activity class. This is the last part. Enrollment form, enrollment form activity class. Yeah, and we have this other method. Okay, this method is a listener of the form, of the data entry form, the enrollment form. And this is the listener that is triggered every time that a value is modified. So here you have the parameters, the attribute UID and the value. And what you have to do is to save the value, if not empty, otherwise delete it. Because if you delete, you remove a value in the data entity form, what you are going to have here probably is an empty string. So you have to check if the value is empty or not. If it's empty, delete it, otherwise save it. Okay. Uh, and yes, um, I think that's all so far. Then we have, and an optional exercise about reset values. 
because in this, uh, well, I, I will recommend you uh, to use the child program. So use please the child program. And in this enrollment, in this program, we have uh, an attribute that is unique and auto-generated. Uh, so if you if you do until the exercise 8C, and you will be able to fill the form, the enrollment form, and the track attendee instance will be enrolled in the program. But the attribute that is auto-generated will not be auto-generated because it's not implemented. The, the exercise 8D is the one that implements this behavior. So this is optional. This is a preview. Okay. Uh, any questions about the exercise? 